Hello and welcome to another USCCA live event. My name is Tim Schmidt. I'm the founder and CEO of the United States Concealed Carry Association. So this is like two weeks now that we've been doing these and uh, I've come to realize that hundreds of thousands of people have been tuning in and so I want to welcome all of you. Um, I've got a really exciting special guest tonight, but before I introduce him, I just want to set the stage here. So obviously we all know we're locked in our houses, we're in quarantine, this coronavirus thing is, is ravaging the country. Um, I believe there's over 12,000 now fatalities in the United States alone. And one of the, the issues that's been coming up is that, holy cow, we need masks. And now when I say masks, I'm, I'm talking about both the surgical, surgical masks as well as the N95 respirators. And, you know, the first time I heard this, I'm thinking, well, duh, of course we need masks. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, well, there are certain people out there that are actually doing something about it. You know, lots of our politicians are just pointing fingers and laying blame, but, but some folks are actually taking, taking initiative and, and, and getting things done, which leads me to my guest tonight. I'm really excited to have Tyler Merritt on. Tyler Merritt is the CEO of Nine Line Apparel. He's a fellow I've known for quite a few time, uh, quite a few years. Uh, last time I saw him, it was in New York City. We were out at an event together, uh, meeting with, um, I believe it was Sean Hannity, and uh, we just had a great time together. I love this guy. The first time I met Tyler, I thought to myself, "Okay, here's a guy that knows how to get stuff done." Um, so, Tyler, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. I am not a member of Antifa. Uh, this is the. Uh, <laughs> containment mass that uh, you were just starting to mention. This is that alternative to the critically low supplied uh, surgical mass. Uh, this is not meant to uh, protect you. It's meant to mm -hmm. protect the loved ones around you. And it's that mutual assurance, as long as everyone is wearing this within close proximity, that accidental sneeze, that accidental cough uh, won't infect someone that has an immunocompromised uh, condition or, or that could potentially um, die from this virus. So that, that's really what we started off on with this initiative with Bella Canvas. And then we've, uh, we've taken on that, that next initiative that you talked about, the, the, the critically low shortage of N95 masks. Uh, these masks are made predominantly in China, uh, almost all of them. And the FDA facilities are located over there. Uh, and we've created our, our, uh, an alternative, but uh, it, we're in the process of that FDA approval. So uh, according to lawyers, I cannot say that it is currently an alternative. I can just <laughs> say that we have test results that show uh, incredible things and that we've published it and that I'm sending this to my mother and I love her. <laughs> Awesome, Tyler. I, I'll tell you what, man, I can't dig, wait to dig into to more of what you just talked about. Um, I, I just do want to let the listeners know or the viewers know that we're going to be here for probably about 40 minutes. Tyler's got a hard stop um, that he needs to go. Uh, I'm pretty sure he needs to receive some inventory for the actual mask making project that he's doing right now, which that's pretty cool. Um, but I do want to just let everyone know that, you know, Tyler and I are going to be digging into this whole mass thing. We're going to be digging into just answering some questions about, hey, what's it like to run a company during like this massive quarantine situation? Um, we've got a whole bunch of uh, questions from, from viewers that, that have come in over the last week in preparation for this interview, Tyler. Um, seems to me like uh, everyone wants to know uh, what, what you think about a lot of stuff. Um, we've got uh, questions from Illinois, Florida, California, South Dakota, Texas, Connecticut. Um, so we'll be getting into those questions as well. Um, in addition, probably the one thing I'm most excited about tonight is that the whole purpose of tonight is to help Tyler's initiative, NineLineMask.com. Nine what these guys are doing is amazing. And, and so many people ask me, Tim, what can I do to help? Well, this is what you can do to help right now. What Tyler, Tyler's going to be explaining is exactly this initiative, how we can help them. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do, Tyler, I, I think you may have heard this, but every single membership that we sell in the next 24 hours, the USCCA is going to donate $50 of that membership, plus I'm going to match another $50, so $100 per membership. Our goal is to raise at least 50 grand to give to you guys to help on this initiative. So with that, that intro, would, that would definitely help. awesome, man. Well, well, hopefully we can crush that 500 membership goal and give you guys even more money. Um, so I, I know that, I mean, I, I've spent a few, uh, or I spent some time watching the, the Fox News uh, interview that you did. I know you were on, on CNBC as well. You're, you've been on TV a lot this week. I, I can't imagine how you're getting much sleep. But um, 
Would you mind just kind of taking a step back and, and, and telling all the viewers first how you got into this, this whole mask initiative? I know you mentioned a little bit about your, your parents, so that totally makes sense, but, but what your companies had to do, what, some of the hurdles, I mean, give me the, give me the scoop, what's going on? Yeah, so uh, about the time that this uh, started being recognized as a, as a real pandemic, uh, maybe a week prior, uh, myself and the CEO of Bella Canvas, uh, an incredible human, uh, saw that there was a, a critical shortage. You know, I've got a lot of friends and family members in the medical community. We've been talking about this uh, since the it, kind of the outbreak in China. Um, and some of the things that were really troubling was the fact that you could be asymptomatic and still be shedding the virus and that the... Um, the, 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 the contagion uh, is so rapidly spread so quickly. And I probably had this virus, um, but we don't have the testing kits to, to know about that. And we saw the CDC fumble. They said that uh, we're not gonna allow testing kits to come in without going through us. We're gonna develop it, we're gonna mass produce it. And then a couple months into it realized that they're, they're not the private sector. They don't know how to move quickly. It's a large bureaucratic organization and large DOD contractors and large bureaucratic organizations. They're not nimble like us. They can't pivot and move. Um, and they're stuck behind these regulatory requirements and don't understand that this is something that needed to be acted on months ago. Um, so at that point, we started recognizing that there was other critical shortages. You know, the surgical mask uh, required for surgeons to wear during an operation, it, it's not necessarily protecting them. It gives slight protections to them, but it's really so that they don't accidentally cough or sneeze into an open cavity. And, and now we're giving them to patients who walk in because we don't know if they're sick. Um, they could be asymptomatic or they could be symptomatic and obviously actively coughing and sneezing. So this is meant to help protect our doctors and our nurses and one another. Um, so everyone should be playing this. And there's likely to be a directive coming down because uh, we're obviously working with the Haynes Coalition and the task force that's uh, spearheading this um, to, to ensure that every American is wearing one of these. Uh, and we're trying to make it as affordable and distribute it as fast as possible because there's bad actors out there uh, that are trying to take advantage of the situation and make billions and billions of dollars uh, and they're, they're, they're not doing it for any other reason other than they see an opportunity to capitalize on a horrible situation uh, and they're gonna make an incredible amount of money. So Bella Canvas and myself started talking about this. Uh, they came up with this incredible design idea. I came up with an option to kind of promote and and uh, to distribute. Uh, they sent me original masks for free. I gave them away to our local police and fire department. Uh, they started uh, charging us about 50 cents. We started selling it at 50 cents. Uh, and obviously the demand grew exponentially uh, to the point where I had to allocate such a large amount of staff to get out upwards of 500,000 masks uh, in a day. And we're, we're currently scaling to, to get about 1.5 million masks out by the end of next week today. Uh, wow. So this took a lot of work between our partnerships at SAP, you know, the, between engineering firms that we're working with, between Bella Canvas, uh, to, to try to go from zero to tens of millions of products being produced every day and distributed. Mm. Um, it, it was a group effort. And, and we've wow. collabed almost every single night, usually at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, <laughs> to make sure so, that we're, we're sharing that information. <laughs> So, so Tyler, how, did, did you know the, the guy from Bella Campus before this? Were you, were you guys buddies or how, how did that whole uh, partnership happen? Yeah, I mean, the shirts that uh, we work with together, I mean, I'm, I'm wearing one uh, right now, Nine Line and uh, USCCA. This is 100% made in the United States. Uh, oh, you know, okay, so they're, they're, they're uh, one of your suppliers already, got it. They are the largest manufacturer of US textile goods in the country. Um, okay. They have, uh, you know, factories that have machines to cut material that are the size of football fields. Um, wow. So they have completely <laughs> retooled all of their machines to produce nothing but these masks. And that was actually a directive by the governor of uh, California that all non-essential businesses shut down. So obviously he was able to pivot to become essential. And he didn't do it to, you know, profit. He did it to take care of his thousand plus employees, to find something sure. for in a time of a war uh, which is what I would consider this. You know, this is economic warfare, this is biological warfare, and, and I'm not saying that as a conspiracy theorist, I'm just saying that as a fact, that we mm -hmm. currently 
are dealing with a pathogen. I'm, I'm not saying China at this point. I'm just saying there's a pathogen that is mm -hmm. causing devastation on our economy yeah. and so, on our loved ones. And, and we needed to pivot to provide our services where the government could not. So, so Tyler, help me understand. So, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, so are you. And, and I, I certainly admire this, this pivot that, you, that you're making and that you've made uh, to, to keep your employees busy. I, th I think you have over a couple hundred employees, right? Yep. Yeah, we so, had uh, uh, about 200 employees and our revenue stream came from not just online, but also from our retail stores. I got a partnership mm -hmm. with Black Rifle. Uh, I have three stores. Um, and then I also have a wholesale opportunities and custom opportunities like customers like yourself. Um, and, but big box stores, you know, Cabela's, Bass Pro, where <clears throat> people aren't frequenting them anymore. So the mm -hmm. orders that we had on schedule are being delayed or canceled. So that mm -hmm. the economic impact is roughly around 45% of our business was cut wow. off. Uh, but I've kept about 90 plus percent of our employees. And so obviously I have to find uh, new things for them to do. If I have no one uh, coming into the retail store because I was forced to close down, uh, then I need those, you know, retail uh, employees to come and help us distribute masks. And that's their new job. That's their roles and responsibilities. And they're very excited about what they're doing. They, they see the need and they're working their butts off all day long. So, so that brings up a good, uh, another good question that I want to ask you, Tyler. And, and before I ask you, though, I, I do want to point out that, that Tyler is wearing a, uh, a pretty cool shirt, America Strong, Nine Line logo on one side, USCCA logo on the other. And if you hang around a little bit, I'm gonna let you know how you can get one of those suckers. Um, but so, so to your employees, so, so I, certainly, you know, we've had to shut this, our entire office down. Um, lucky, lucky, luckily for, for the USCCA and Delta Defense, um, you know, we actually have had a lot of success running uh, virtually. Most of our, or at least, you know, probably 60% of our employees are, are member service agents and they can actually do that from, from their house, which actually surprised me because I, I you know, I remember the apartment I lived in when I was 25 years old, and man, I, I wouldn't be able to take a phone call at all there. <laughs> but, but it's been working out good. So, so talk to me about, about the morale of your team and, and, and what kind of things you've had to do to, to keep them safe. And, and uh, I'd love to hear that. What, what's, what's going on with that? Well, I mean, first, first of all, as a mission essential business, you still have to take those precautions. If there's someone who can work from home, they're working from home. You know, so that's mm -hmm. our sales department, our customer service department for the majority of them. They're at home. Uh, anyone who can work at home, we're encouraging them to work at home. But uh, I have, you know, production distribution. They can't work from home. So because of that, you know, we are having to ensure that all surfaces are cleaned every two hours, uh, that we have hand sanitizing stations about every 10 feet that uh, we've briefed all of our employees every time we get new information on how to keep themselves safe. Uh, things that are being pushed out by the FTC, uh, or the, the FDA and the CDC on a daily basis, you know, we make sure that that information gets disseminated. So everyone in our uh, facility is, is wearing a mask to protect the people around them. Uh, and if they exhibit any type of symptoms, you know, they're, they're enforced to stay home. You know, we obviously provide uh, sick pay, uh, but you know, there's an additional two weeks added on top of that uh, by the government with the interesting policy. We could probably talk about that at a different time. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the idea is to take care of them. Uh, and mm -hmm. if they're not alive to come back to work, uh, and if obviously Nine Line can't survive this, mm -hmm. there's nothing to come back to. So there is a careful balance between uh, the sanctity of life and uh, ensuring some type of economic stability. And, and that's really what we're dealing with right now. So especially anyone who's uh, older, you know, we're, we're keeping them set aside. We're, we're, we're making sure that they're you know, in an office and no one goes in there. Um, sure. But uh, it, it's, it's a very difficult time. I think it's gonna change uh, the world and how we uh, look at safety, specifically PPE. Um, mm -hmm. And how we look at the uh, the regulatory requirements that are hindering uh, the innovation of our uh, U.S. manufacturers, inventors, uh, scientists, um, and yeah. and I hope that the bad actors are looked at as well. Yeah, you know, Tyler, I want to dig into that a little bit more. The red, the red tape and the 
the hoarding of materials and, and, and just, the, just the government's way of, of seemingly being experts at just slowing stuff down. Um, before we dive into that, though, I just want to welcome anyone who just, just hopped on uh, this broadcast. Uh, I'm here with Tyler Merritt. He is the CEO of Nine Line Apparel, veteran, veteran-owned organization that makes hands down the coolest pro-Second Amendment, pro-freedom t-shirts that anyone has ever seen. Um, I was actually, Tyler, I was going to tell you this story when I was driving over here from, from my house. Um, I was reflecting on, you know, man, it, it's, it's a bummer that the parking lot is just so empty here at the USCCA headquarters. Um, because normally when you drive in here, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of cars. And I would say probably 40% are pickup trucks. And of those 40% that are pickup trucks, they all have a USCCA decal. And almost all of them have a nine line decal. Now, you and I both know there's have great taste. <laughs> you, you and I both know there are tons of, I mean, every gun company under the sun makes cool decals, but man, at, at USCCA headquarters, they're all USCCA and nine lines. So you, you, you've totally taken this over. Um, okay, well, so now it's, like, a, it's a value based system. So you, you guys have a, a extreme values that kind of resonate with that customer <clears> group. Uh, and, and I think we do too. And I think what's going to become more valuable, and I'm trying to pull up the tag, but you know, that, that made in US. You know, uh, the, the fact that you are U.S. based, you don't outsource your uh, mm. sales and marketing and customer service to India and China. And, uh, you, you know, you're focused on uh, building uh, and growing jobs here in the United States. And I think that's going to mean something more to people. You know, they're not going to care if their cell phone is a couple uh, dollars more expensive as long as it's not made in China. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's what we're going to start seeing. Yeah, a- amen, dude. And, and perfect segue. Because so now, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about. Do you think that that the American American industry will will open their eyes to this this um, this whole concept of, of, of we're so outsourced to China and they have so much leverage now on us? I, I believe that they've that they're uh, you know, withholding or controlling uh, uh, 3M's production of the N95 masks and. And not only that, so it's a combination of the outsourcing and, and, and the, uh, our, our dependence on China, but also just the red tape within the U.S. as well and, and, and the hoarding of materials that's going on. I mean, talk, talk to me about that. How, how bad is it really? How long is this segment again? Because <laughs> there's a <laughs> lot got... of information. <laughs> okay, we, we got about 20 <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> so the, the high level cliff notes, and these are facts. You know, they, these are things that have been disclosed and there's just more and more that is hopefully going to come to light. So if, if you're a U.S. based company, Canadian based company, it doesn't matter if the majority of your manufacturing is in China. Um, that's not your factory. That's China's factory. It doesn't matter if you built it. doesn't matter if you staff it. Uh, that's theirs. Um, and what we've seen is that, yes, right prior to this pandemic just going insane. Before it left China and it just started spreading around the globe, uh, 3M, Honeywell, other people have uh, been reported to have sent almost all of our reserve PPE, uh, specifically this mask, the N95, back to China because they said they needed it. And that's, you know, their strong partnership. Um, Honeywell disclosed exactly how many, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of units. 3M refuses to disclose it. So it's an undisclosed amount of PPE. Um, So then you go and compound that issue with the fact that you can't make this mask because the mask, which is, by the way, the cheapest respiratory mask you could possibly get out there. So you have an N95 all the way up to an N100. You have an R95 all the way up to an R100. You have a P95 all the way up to a P100. And the difference between those numbers and designators is an FDA, NIOSH uh, approved certification that says, that this mask is consistent of this material and it's been approved. And not only that, it's been made in a specifically designated FDA facility. So that means it has to be certified. And that process to get a class two device is several years normally. Uh, And to get certification on your facility and show the chain of custody of materials is several years because they'll do sample tests and tolerances. And it's, it's meant for when you have time to ensure that the end user is safe and no one is is making bogus claims. Uh, So if you have an abundance of time, it's a system. When you've outsourced 90 plus percentage of this manufacturing to FDA approved facilities in say China, 
uh, and the material is made in majority in say China, uh, they now have the supply, they own the supply and they know that there's a demand. And since they just took all of our stuff that was here prior to it spreading, there's even more of a demand. So hmm. about a week ago, there was an estimated uh, 3 billion mass shortage, right? And we're making tens of millions a day. So you'll catch up in a very long period of time. And then uh, we, we realized that we're not even getting that production because that production is going to Italy and it's going to other places, whoever the highest bidder is. Hmm. So you think oh. it's bad in the United States where you have <clears throat> federal, state, local, private companies all trying to get this material, driving the price up. Hmm. Then you have other countries involved. And the only person who's prospering right now is China because magically they had hospitals ready to go. They had tons of PPE. Uh, they had the manufacturing capability to just pump it out. And, you know, the countries like United States that are very uh, lawsuit heavy, you know, the, mm. the number of lawsuits that occur. If uh, a hospital that I'm working with right now, they won't sign an indemnity clause to allow me to give this product that's not FDA approved uh, to their doctors and nurses who are asking for it. Um, I can't combine a filtration system that is tested at the P99 level with single ply and a P100 with double ply. And again, no claims or assertions, just I'm saying this is the test results we got on the third. Um, mm -hmm. I can't sell this product as being effective against a pathogen more effective than this because there are laws, federal laws that say, if I say this is a better variant, scalable variant, even with independent test results, even asking for an emergency FDA approval, um, a um, accelerated FDA approval process will likely take six months. Uh, we have six days as of like a couple weeks ago. So the overall big problem that people have to understand is that we have outsourced our FDA facilities. We have outsourced our ability to make this material. There's only two facilities in the United States. And I pointed it out in a Fox interview a couple weeks ago. Um, it might've been a couple days ago, I haven't slept. Uh, <laughs> but it, it basically said, you know, I tracked down the manufacturer who makes the melt blown material. It's in Germany. And I've actually published it on Nine Line uh, Mask you know, a while ago. So this machine takes about six months. Uh, it's about the size of a football field. It takes about six months to create. Um, and then once it's created, it can pump out, you know, <clears throat> millions and millions of, of tons. And this material used to cost $6,000 a ton. It's now 100 times that, probably 1,000 times that at this point. So this mass that used to cost, oh yeah, this mass used to cost cents when you buy it in the volume of say 10 plus million. Mm -hmm. I have a quote that I submitted to the DOJ, so for you 3M, uh, from an <laughs> actor that's representing 3M saying that I will get a final quote as soon as I sign a non-disclosure, uh, non-disparagement agreement, then I would get a direct quote three for $70 million for 10 million units. That's $7 a unit for something that cost pennies. So wow. obviously I submitted that to the DOJ before it became wildly <laughs> illegal and I informed them that I'm submitting to the DOJ and here's my reference number, just so you know. Um, and they haven't talked to me much since then, but I'm working with yeah. you know, city, state, federal organizations to help source yeah. this mask and I'm doing it for free. I actually created a website at Nine Line Mask that introduced the suppliers, authorized suppliers, people who've been doing this for years to the end user hospitals. And, and mm -hmm. that was just a free, introduction so that they can get these masks without a thousand middlemen because that's what's happening is someone is buying this up there's 10 or 12 intermediaries all taking a percentage so it goes from a dollar to a dollar 70 to three dollars to five dollars to seven dollars and those intermediaries are selling them by the millions doing nothing uh and, and you're you know, just talking about this <clears throat> price gouging you know, when it, when it comes to, I mean, the free market system is, is by far the most efficient way to, to, de to deliver any goods and services. But when this kind of crap happens, when, as you say, when we're under attack, which we are, I mean, for people to do that, that's, that's just, un I, I think that's un-American. It's, it's insane. I, I, uh, I, well, they're not. I, the, the, well, okay, well, whatever. It's, it sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. So, so the <clears> ones <throat> that are actually, uh, maybe a second or third intermediary that's here, mm. they're probably American. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're bad humans, just like the non-Americans, but they're, just, they're bad actors, they're bad humans. Those yeah. people will 
likely go to hell if there's a heaven and hell. I, I personally believe there is one. And mm-hmm. they'll hopefully go to jail before then. Right. Um, that's my hope. Fingers crossed. But in the, in the meantime, there's so many good companies. There's so many companies yep. that are and saying, I'm not going to sit down and accept this as, as fact. <clears throat> and we're going to change this. And, and those are the yeah. people I like working with. You know, Tyler, and and that's a a great point to to focus on the good, focus on the positive, because there are a ton of good companies, and your company is is one of them. Um, For those of you who are just joining, I'm I'm on here with Tyler Merritt. He's the CEO of of, uh, Nine Line Apparel, and I really have to applaud what you and your team is doing, not to mention all of your good friends um, who are really trying to make a difference and and help this company or help this country and and help folks like like your parents. You're you're talking to me before the call about your mom's on the front line. She's a nurse and and your dad just got done with some chemo and and if he gets this disease, it'll probably take him out. Um, And and so I totally understand that motivation. So, so before we get into the next thing, I just want to quickly summarize. Um, for those of you who are watching this, man, if, you, if you've got some extra cash, please help Tyler's effort. You can go to ninelinemask.com. That's ninelinemask.com. And he's got a, a place there where you can, first of all, you can order masks for yourself. Um, but you can also donate money to, help, to, to help, help, that, help Tyler's company do the good things that they're doing. For those of you who, who well, aren't there's, USC. There's actually a couple of things on there. There's, there's more than, and I'm, I, I'm sorry, there's a little delay. Oh, that's okay. I did not yeah. need to off. You're fine. But there's uh, a way that you can donate to our initiative to create uh, a accelerated emergency FDA approved mask and filtration system, which we're applying <clears> for, which is wildly expensive. Uh, and, and there's also a way that you can donate uh, money so that these masks go to the individuals that really need them but can't afford them. You know, your homeless individuals, your nonprofits that don't have the funding. Uh, and we partner with United Way so that you can donate directly. Uh, and then there's another great organization, which you might be familiar with, which is called USCCA. Uh, <laughs> and what you just mentioned uh, is incredible. That, that's your, honestly the, the first uh, for-profit corporation to step up and say, hey, I want to help. And I'm extremely uh, honored to have been partnered with you for, for so long. And uh, I, the, the gesture is very much appreciated and well received because the, the 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 government asked the civilian sector to step up and I, I like to say they asked us to create a spaceship out of the spare parts in our garage and then when we did and it's more scalable better and it flies faster than nasa they said well hold up a second it doesn't meet nasa requirements and uh protocols so you can't use that um, even <laughs> that, though test results say that it's better. So that, that, that's, that's what we're up against, yeah. and it's hard. That, that's such a great analogy, because that's exactly what they asked you to do, and then you did it, and now and, and uh, it, that, that's got to be so frustrating. So, so just to reiterate, so for those of you who have been thinking about becoming a USCCA member, I know that there's a ton of you who are watching this right now. Now, there's never been a better time to, than to join now, because if you, when you join today, we're going to donate $50 of every USCCA membership, and then I'm going to match it for $100 per membership. If we just, if we just get 500 memberships, that's $50,000 that we're going to be sending over to Nine Line to help them do this, do this important mission. And imagine, if we do more, it'll be even more. So, so be sure that uh, the, the easiest way to do that is to click on the link, or actually you can't click on the link, but the type in uscca.com Nine Line. Or if you want, you can give our call center a call, 855-205-6998. And then also be sure you go, you go to ninelinemask.com and follow all of the links, all of the different ways that you can support Nineline, and be sure you do that. This is really important. Um, one more thing for those of you who are still, if you're not sure if you want to join, uh, one of the free gifts you're going to give tonight, in addition to all the money we're going to donate, is that we're going to send you one of the t-shirts that Tyler's wearing right now. America Strong has got the, nine, the cool nine line flag on the right shoulder and the USCCA fla- uh, uh, logo on the left shoulder. I can't wait to get one of those myself. Nice, Tyler. Um, and we're also going to give you this bonus. It's a uh, USCCA USB training bullet. Legitimate, good firearms awareness and preparation training. Um, it'll, it'll take you from zero to, to, to well prepared. So, so please take advantage of this right now. It's uscca.com, nine line, and nine line mask.com. Um, There's people out there that are, are scared, and they should be. Uh, the, the, one of my good friends, uh, his, his father was murdered a few days ago. Um, the amount mm. of crime that is in this city, in Savannah, 
uh, is going rampant. Uh, you, you can't go outside w w safely without an armed escort or being armed yourself. That, that's my personal opinion. Uh, wow. And if it's your first time ever grabbing a pistol, first of all, please find someone who's a licensed trained instructor. Uh, you know, we're instructing and teaching all our employees that have never held a firearm. Uh, and, you know, luckily I've got 400 acres of wood so I can do it back here. Uh, hmm. but there's, there's people out there that have never done so. So that instructional video that you're passing out, uh, the USCCA membership, you know, because even though people aren't getting arrested right now for just about anything, they will get arrested for, um, anything involving a firearm and mm -hmm. you need to be protected because there's bad people out there that are taking advantage of the situation that cops are not arresting for anything other than a serious crime. And I know uh, that, that there's there's a lot of crime and you need to protect yourself because you don't know how long it's going to take or if the police are actually going to respond uh, because of this uh, this current situation. It's not that they don't want to. It's just that they're they're in a very, very difficult situation themselves. So you need to protect yourself. Excellent, Tyler. Well, I certainly appreciate that, man. Um... So one thing you said before, I know we have to wrap up soon here. I'm, I'm going to be really cognizant of your, of your hard, hard stop. But, you know, the importance of, of, of thinking positively and, yes, preparing for the worst but expecting the best. You know, it's amazing to me how many stories of, of companies and now the, the examples I'm about to give are in our own industry. And, but I realize that across all industries, there's all sorts of private companies that are coming uh, to, you know, to, to the rescue and, and helping out. Um, just a few I wanted to point out, I'm sure you've heard of these. Um, uh, NSSF, that's our own industry uh, association. They donated $25,000 um, to support their region's um, uh, medical health professionals. Another one I got here is Remington Arms, um, offered up one of their manufacturing facilities to, 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 to create supplies to help uh, COVID-19. And, and I literally, not to, not to toot the USCCA term too much, but I just heard that. So, so our USCCA Expo was going to be in, I believe, Kansas City, Missouri this year. And um, it's, of course, the whole thing got shut down. But apparently, we had ordered like a, a tremendous amount of um, hand sanitizer. So we donated that to a group down in Milwaukee. And, um, but I'm mostly excited, I mean, those are, those are great examples, but I'm mostly excited to, to get behind you, you guys and help what you're doing because I really feel that you've got the horsepower. When I say that, I mean you personally. I've never met a guy that, that gets more done, I think. Um, I, I, I'm really excited to get behind you in Nine Line. And, and for those of you who never, maybe never met Tyler before, never even heard of Nine Line, I'm telling you what, guys, Tyler's a true American and he's doing great things, so please, be generous. Give till it hurts, and and, and help help uh, help Nine Line with what they're doing. So Tyler, we got just a few minutes left. Any any parting comments or, or closing thoughts you'd like to add? Yeah, um, the the inspiration that things are going to get better. It, it's true. Uh, it, it, I've been to combat many times, many different theaters operations, and I've worked with some of the most incredible humans. Uh, on this planet. Uh, and, and I've had the privilege to work with incredible organizations like Haynes Co., like Bella Canvas, like yourself. Um, and, and there's a, a lot of, there's more good than there are bad. So don't get focused on the bad. Don't get focused on the negativity. You know, protect yourself. Don't be um, naive that there is a lot of uh, bad people out there that, that, that want to do bad things to you. But uh, when we're talking about this specific initiative, um, I think we just are going to have to wake up at some point that when you outsource U.S. manufacturing to a country that um, utilizes economic warfare, that utilizes not this case, I'm not alluding to it, uh, biological warfare, you know, <laughs> it, it is a fascist regime. Uh, it's an regime that uh, doesn't like our current administration for very specific reasons. And I think we need to look at where our manufacturing is occurring and see if we're mutually aligned in values. Uh, and I think right now, when I say that I get the privilege to work with the smartest scientists, the smartest engineers, the best manufacturers in the world, they're here in the United States. And we have innovative ideas and we can come up with solutions in days, not weeks, not months. You know, there's currently a contract from Health and Human Services for 500 million N95 masks, masks that haven't 
had any tests been displayed to the public to see how effective it is against this pathogen, a pathogen that is 0.23 microns smaller than the test that's conducted for this. Um, that's science. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. Uh, and that this material that has been hoarded, uh, this is a PTFE uh, filtration that is used for things like Teflon, that is used for water treatment plants, that's used for high, high, high end filtration for industrial and uh, commercial um, uh, units. Uh, this material has been acquired and has been secured and it's being cut here in the United States. And the, this mask, you know, version 26, and we'll probably be on version 47 by the end of uh, the day. Uh, it's being produced by engineers that work uh, directly with Gulfstream and Ford and GM. You know, this is a leading engineering firm in polymer injection molding. You know, there is a solution where if you look at the numbers, <clears throat> if you have 5 million healthcare providers, and DOD and fire and police that need this mask and they need it for the foreseeable future, say the next two months. If you have to have a five to $7 unit every single day that's thrown away, which is the proper way to use this because this, this degrades over time. It's, it's not hydrophobic. It's degrades as you breathe into it. It's 1950s technology. Um, if you need that <clears throat> every day for that number of people at a minimum, right? For the next two months, that's an incredible amount of money, billions and billions of dollars. If you have a reusable mask, right, that you are simply changing out the filter, then you're talking about a filter that should cost theoretically around 50 cents. And you're talking about a mask that theoretically at volume could be done at say $20 a unit in the United States here, US manufactured, US made. So there's a crossover, about five days, you've broken even with buying hmm. these disposable masks with a theoretical, non-FDA approved, non-surgically authorized for right this second, that when tested and when the independent tests are potentially validated, so you have to use very specific words, uh, <laughs> by the FDA. Uh, and we start down the road of approving the FDA facilities that we're working with. When that occurs, uh, we have a solution that I can show in and math that give me two weeks, I can scale and produce a million of these in a day. Give wow. me three weeks and I'll have you five million. Give me 30 days and I will produce 100 million filters. That sounds like a lot, right? Five million masks, 100 million filters, privately owned organizations spending their own money on R&D and FDA approval. So that's enough for our healthcare providers and our firefighters and our DOD for 10 days. That's it. Wow. So when you understand the supply chain difficulties, when you understand the money that's involved, the billions and billions of dollars that organizations that produce this and their intermediaries are making, there's very little concern by maybe people who are lobbied by them to hypothetically. To, to do much about this because the current contract right now by the health and human services is produce me 500 million of these, right? 500 million in the next 18 months with wow. zero reference to COVID, except for the fact that it starts off with due to the recent COVID outbreak followed by the requirements for this contract. I know this because hmm. I've reached out to the contract <clears throat> officer saying, can I do it? I could probably do it faster and I could probably do it with something that is tested against this pathogen which I think is probably more important than just produce something without showing the results that this is effective against the pathogen. <laughs> but all of those things will cause people to freak out, cause healthcare providers to maybe not want to go to work. Sure. Um, but I equate that to <clears throat> me driving down MSR Tampa in Iraq in a soft shell Humvee, uh, wearing body armor that is proven ineffective, but no one tells us. By the way, that also happened. Uh, so oh, I don't man. like the false sense of security when it's involving yeah. my mother and I'm going to encourage her to wear this one. I can't make her, I can't make any claims, mm -hmm. but she'll wear this. My father will wear this and I'll feel more comfortable. That's what I can say. I just can't say that this is better than this. Um, I just say I would prefer the science and math 
and studies that I've done on this to be used by the people I love and care about. Um, and now I'm in that uphill battle. Now I'm in that gray area of, am I making a claim? Uh, am I gonna get sued over this? Uh, so I have to have people sign documents, doctors who want this. I have to have them indemnify me because the hospital groups, <clears throat> they can't sign off on it. It's an insurance mm -hmm. thing. The yeah. insurances will not allow them to use this because it's not FDA approved, it doesn't have NIOSH certifications. And the government won't indemnify the insurance companies. The insurance companies won't indemnify the doctors and the hospitals. And the doctors and hospitals are essentially having to go and indemnify everyone. I'm not gonna sue the hospital group. I'm not gonna sue you know, Tyler Merritt and the Nine Line Mask Initiative. So if I get sick, uh, there's no recourse for them because there's no one right now, to the best of my understanding, truly supporting them by giving them the things that they need. And that's just one thing. I mean, they need that and they need testing kits. Mm -hmm. um, primarily. So anything you can do to help out, truly appreciate it. Uh, this is a fight that I am not going to back down on. I don't know how to back down. Uh, you know me and those <laughs> that know me uh, will attest to that. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think this is something that I can give up on. And this is personal. Uh, you know, I'm financially invested. I'm emotionally invested. I'm very, very tired. Uh, I haven't slept in <laughs> several days. <laughs> but uh, I see I see everything coming together. I see the positive. Yeah. I see the engineers yep. that I'm working with with almost a final prototype that we can go to mass production. I have an inbound shipment of an additional 11.3 million filters once I cut them. That means I have to get rolled material and cut it uh, in the next few days. And that is a logistical nightmare. Um, yeah, I bet. And, and I have the smartest logisticians uh, out there and they're doing incredible things every day and they're sacrificing time away from their family and they're doing it because they know we have the ability to go help doctors, nurses, firefighters, police officers, and that's what we wanna do. And we're gonna do it without gouging because if you go online and try to buy a 10 pack of these filters, it's $400, $40 a filter. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's I'm am, very that's confident insane. I can get this out the door. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can get this out the door most likely for about 50 cents wow. to a dollar. It's still fluctuating based on the number of things that I have to do to get it here. Tyler, I got to tell you, man, you're, you're an amazing American. You, uh, you, you're a guy that gets stuff done. I'm, I'm honored and, and proud to call you my friend. Thank you again so much for being on the show tonight. I, I promise that you've made a huge impact on a lot of people. And uh, for those of you who want to help out, you know, if you're asking the question, hey, how can I be a part of this? How can I help, help out? First thing, can, first thing you can do is go to ninelinemask.com and do whatever Tyler says. Whatever he says, donate money, donate money, make it happen. Next thing you can do is you can become a USCCA member tonight. I told you earlier that every new membership that, we, that comes in in the next 24 hours, we're gonna donate $50 and then I'm gonna match 50 so that I'll do the quick math in my head. Yep, that's $100 per membership. So I'm thinking we can get 50, 60, maybe 70 grand over to Tyler. And, uh, and then of course you're gonna get that cool bullet USB and then also uh, that, that cool shirt that Tyler's wearing as well. So there's really no reason not to become a member right now. There's no reason not to go to Nine Line Mask. Let's, let's make this happen. Tyler, once again, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tim Schmidt. I'm the president and founder of USCCA. Signing out, everyone take care and stay safe.